Good morning friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options and this is the Morning Market Prep video for November 16th, 2023. Well, yesterday we tried to move on up and pierce some um, upper level um, resistance areas in the chart, but just fell a little bit short. Volume was a little bit light. The market was just kind of saying, I think we need a bit of a rest, um, but no major pullback to speak of. If we were to take a look at what happened overnight here, um, Asian markets were mostly lower overnight. Um, we had some pretty substantial pullbacks in Hong Kong. Um, down 1.3% um, overnight. Nikkei also pulled back. So a little bit of uh, pressure maybe from the from the sharp rally starting to show up. European markets are mixed this morning, but are mostly lower. I would say that the movement in Europe though is rather mixed or, or rather modest. Um, Siemens uh, is up on earnings by 5%, Burberry is down 9% and they're suggesting uh, that demand um, you know, on the luxury items, the, the demand is falling really sharply um, over there. This morning we have a bit of a mix as well here in the US with the Dow just showing a little teeny tiny bullishness um, and a little teeny tiny bearishness in both the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. We have oil this morning that's moving lower. If you saw that petroleum status number yesterday, we had a really big build in supplies yesterday. And, um, you know, that's one of the double edged swords. When we slow the economy down, we begin to see demand starting to pull back. So what we're seeing here is the consumers are kind of tapped out and they are just not spending like they were before. And um, that is making those supply numbers go up. Um, remember, we are still seeing production cuts from uh, Saudi Arabia, Russia, and other areas. And um, yet that is plenty of oil, um, apparently, for the way the folks are spending right now. Let's take a look um, on the bond side of things. Bonds, just a little tiny bit lower. They were ticking higher yesterday. They're easing back just a little bit this morning. I think mostly on that story out of UBS that UBS is suggesting that the Fed will soon start cutting rates. Mm. We're away from our 2% target unless something really major happens in the market. That might be a little bit over anticipation. Uh, uh, Fed continues to say higher for longer. So um, let's let's kind of let's kind of be a little bit careful over predicting what the Fed is going to do. The market tends to be wrong on that over and over and over. That said, how about we take a look at these uh, charts and see how we might want to approach today on this Thursday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again everyone and thank you so much for being here. I do very much appreciate it. Let's try to shake off any bias here. Let's take a look at these charts and see if we can try and gain some information about how we might want to approach the market for today. I do want to say thank you to all the kind words on this. You know, I, um, when I started doing these videos, I thought no one is really going to be all that interested in someone who looks, uh, tries to look at the chart without bias, just looks at the technicals of the chart. And I, I'm, I'm very happy that I was wrong. So thank you so much, everyone, for the kind support to this kind of video um, or this kind of data, just to just try to back away from that bias and emotion that the market is so good at, um, um, at stirring up in traders and just take a look at the details of the chart and looking at the entire chart to see whether or not or how we might want to approach the uh, the market for the day. So looking at the diamonds, you can see we've got our head banged against this um, resistance area here in the chart. And um, I think there's every reason to believe the market just wants to be up 
um, it it really wants to be up. So I would not rule out the possibility that we stay bullish all the way through the end of the week. It's just such a, a palpable desire to um, push or buy this market right now. But that being said, if we break through this resistance, where are we going to go? Well, we pop through this resistance up here. There's a little bit of price resistance right there. And if that price resistance does not hold as resistance, then there's a very good chance we're up here uh, testing um, highs here, uh, yearly highs in the diamonds. Now, one of the things that's really important when we do break a resistance area, we need to show proof that we can hold it as support. And one of the things I, I do want to point out here that I, I just don't think this kind of trend is going to last all that long. It's And as a matter of fact, it's lasted way longer than I suspected it could. This is just a straight up parabolic move in the market. So if the bears were to pull back or find some inspiration on the day, well then let's look at some of these levels in here. I think there's a little bit of a level right through here on the bottom of that big gap up candle. We could always find some areas right in here that we could find some support. But if those bears were to start coming in, a reasonable pullback, and that's just a reasonable pullback, would come back into maybe that gap um, um, or test the, the top side of that gap to see if it can hold. If that doesn't hold, that's where things get a little bit painful because unfortunately in a chart like this, when we zoom straight up, we're not leaving support levels behind to catch us if we start to pull back and that's where we could get some nasty pullbacks. But that easily could not, it could be until, we may have to wait till next week or even after, I don't know when that is going to start, but watch carefully for that possibility. If we take a look at our moving averages here on um, the diamonds, there's been a lot said about the, the um, 50 crossing down to the 200, what they call the death cross, but I don't think that's going to hold. The way we're stretched up here, we're going to see that 50 turn right back up here in the next few days. So watch that closely. We've got our 34 EMA shooting up here through the 50 day or, or 8 exponential shooting up here. So we're, we're going to be creating some kind of support level in here just on a technical basis from the moving averages for a pullback. Let's take a look at our SPY, SPY, also very stretched out here. And yesterday we made that attempt. We pushed up here into this resistance that I had marked and well, doggone it, we backed away from it almost to the tick, pulled back and um, just showing a little bit of hesitation here today. Now there's nothing about that candle pattern that says, oh my gosh, run for the door. Um, it's, it's a spinning top doji. It, it means there's indecision. Um, in the chart. So if we continue that pullback, well, let's look right across here. There's a little bit of price support in the chart right here. Perhaps we're just going to consolidate for a long period of time in the market. But if the bulls can find that inspiration to push on through and pop this level up here, where are we going to go? Well, you can see there's a little bit, little teeny tiny little resistance area right there. Now I could extend that across over here to these tops. But that's about all there is before we stretch on higher and maybe test the um, highs of the year here in the SPY. If the bears, however, find that inspiration and push us on lower, well, if we can't hold the top of this candle, then my suggestion is we could probably easily come on down and test the lower side of that candle. Now, that's a, uh, that's a pretty substantial pullback, but it only gets bad if we break that low and we drop into this gap because this gap is so massive, it can be a real painful move if that were the case. Now, the good news is there's some price support in here that could catch us before we fill the entire gap, but we cannot rule out the possibility that that could occur. Um, technically, in the chart, we've got our 34 coming up through that 50 day. Notice that 50 day is starting to turn, getting that little bit of a hook in it. So we're starting to see that start to pick back up. We're going to have some technical support in here on any kind of consolidation or pullback. If we take a look at our QQQ, QQQ, the 
most extended of the indexes right now up here trying to break the resistance of this year's high and unfortunately we ran up there and just couldn't quite muster the energy to do it um, ended up uh, finishing with um, a bit of a bearish candle here but if you'll notice still finished still finished today at a new high um, pushing through so we just continue to press and press and press in um, the QQQ now I said this yesterday and I still believe this to be true today it's it would be kind of um, well it'd be kind of disappointing wouldn't it if they did all of this work to push us up here and we not catch a new high so watch carefully here for that possibility that they could push on through catch that new high that doesn't mean it holds but catch that new high on the year if we do pull back, you'll notice there's a little bit of price support right in here if those bears find that inspiration if um, and hold right in that area because if it doesn't hold in that area, then we run that risk that we're going to drop into this next level of support and maybe even fill the gap, which would be a pretty painful pullback for the market. But that being said, it wouldn't be out of the question because this rally is parabolic and um, unlikely to be able to sustain itself for a while. You know, one of the things we see is when we race up like that, we either spend a longer time in, in um, a consolidation, and that consolidation could last weeks just consolidating in a range, or we have that substantial pullback to, re to relieve that pressure and allow those moving averages to kind of catch up a little bit. If we take a look at those moving averages, you'll notice that that 50-day moving average is flattened out, starting to turn up. We've got our short-term averages coming up through finally. Um, just kind of shows us how we went from completely overbought to very over, um, uh, completely oversold to completely overbought in such a very quick time period. Our averages can't even catch up. If we were to uh, take a look at our IWM, well, IWM tried to follow through yesterday. I, again, it's just largely unimpressed because it doesn't have any of the tech giants in there. So it continues to languish a little bit here in the market. The good news is, is it had uh, you know pretty substantial volume in that push. We tested this resistance in the chart and well, backed away from it. I marked that yesterday, if you guys remember. And that's another one went almost to the tick where we ran up there and then backed away. And then we ended up slipping back down below this very major resistance area of the chart closing below that area so if the bulls can find inspiration today on IWM then let's look for a retest of this resistance here in the chart and if that can pop well right up there to that resistance level that we marked yesterday if the bears were to follow through with this shooting star pattern find inspiration here today to move lower then maybe a pullback in here to test this trend we got our trend break here. See if that'll hold its support. You'll notice there is a little bit of price data right there that says it could hold there. If they do not hold that, then we may push on down, test the low of that big gapping candle, and there is some price support here to maybe hold that as well. If if that were to fail, that's where this gets painful. Um, that could be a pretty substantial pullback. Now, that being said, I don't think the world comes to an end here if we do pull back to there, because you'll notice if we do pull back into this area, all that's doing is catching that support and actually building a trend here in the chart if it can hold that high or low. But you also want to keep in mind it could also just be very range bound and choppy for a while to chop um, to to absorb such a big move to the upside. If we take a look at our moving averages, you can see popped above our 50 day, rejecting at the 200 day at the moment. It's really not um, hard to see that possibility that we could retest that 50 at a minimum um, in the chart. Let's take a look at our um, VIX. Our VIX pulled back yesterday, but you'll want to notice that, well, we really didn't make any progress um, in the VIX. So 
I don't think this is bad at all um, in any way, shape, or form. Do I think this is bad? What I think the VIX is saying is that maybe we've kind of gotten carried away here for a little bit. Um, market's kind of getting a little bit um, lofty here, and maybe a little rest needs to come into play. Um, whether it pulls back or not, that's still in question. But um, maybe market's just realizing we might be getting a little bit carried away and a little bit ahead of ourselves with this parabolic move. If we take a look at our uh, T2122, T2122 is also telling us that we're carried away here. Um, at one point yesterday, we were at 98 up here. Um, by the way, T2122 cannot go above 100. It never goes above 100. Can't do it because it's built on a ratio. A ratio of how many stocks um um, are moving up how many stocks are moving down and you can see yesterday there was a kind of a flat number that came in there we had about the same number going up as going down as we flattened out here in uh, our t2122 now what it does tell us is we're up here in very rarefied air and if the bulls can find any inspiration today in the data boy we would we don't have far to go um, there's not much room there that doesn't mean we can't get a fairly substantial point move with some good data but there's not much room to go here with a lot of stocks they're just going to run out of that space if if the bears find inspiration however you'll notice we've opened up a very big opportunity for a push to the downside now it doesn't mean it, it has to come all the way down here to the bearish reversal zone but even a pullback here into the mid range would be a pretty normal um uh, move in the market. So watch for that possibility. It could begin, it could occur at any time. And our T2108, T2108 stretched on higher yesterday, up here getting close to that 65% area in the chart. Stocks above their 40 day moving average. This has just been a massive change in 14 days going from 15. Um, only 15% of the stocks above their 40 to stretching straight up to nearly 65% of the stocks. Pretty amazing. Now, one thing you'll notice up here is if we start reaching up here into this 70s area, we're going to be in an extreme overbought situation. And then we typically see, you know, pullbacks or consolidations coming in the market. So we still got more room for the upside here in T2108. But if you look at the chart, you can see this little hockey stick in the air. You know what, and if you're playing hockey, you put a hockey stick in the air, you normally get penalized, right? You go to the penalty box. So what this is suggesting is maybe that upside momentum may be waning just a little bit, and we might look for that little bit of a pullback to come in the market. If not, maybe some consolidation. But the good news is in here, we have broken through some resistance levels. We're making some really good areas of price support that could catch us in the chart. So no big worries if we rest or pull back, um, at least initially, if we can hold those areas. T2107 also had a good day yesterday, pushing on up, but once again, there's that little hockey stick in the air, um, kind of suggesting a penalty might be coming on the way. We might have to go sit in the penalty box for a little bit and just see a little bit of pullback or rest in the market. Approaching a pretty good resistance area in the chart, but the good news is, if we pull back, we've created a pretty good support area in here as well. So a little bit of rest or pullback would not be out of the question. And once again, could happen at any time. If there's some good news in the T20s here today, um, it would be, or yesterday I should say, it would be that as we pushed up yesterday, the bullish breadth remained strong. We continued to see that push to the upside here on that breadth, and we're still holding above this area here. Now, I think one of the big reasons that we have suddenly changed elevations here in breadth of the market is just simply because the corporate buybacks that are going on uh, during this period of time in here, all those corporations were unable to buy back their own stock, and that's creating that additional breadth in the market. 
pushing this up here. So keep an eye on that area right now. Bulls are clearly in control and they show no signs of stopping just yet. Just that little bit of hint that we're overbought um, in the market. Well, not even a little, a big hint that we're way overbought and a pullback could occur at any time. Let's take a look at our economic calendar here for today. And our economic calendar has got a few things that we'll wanna be paying attention to this morning um first off we're going to come into well we've got some fed conversation and there's a big bunch of fed conversation today to be paying attention to we've got bar speaking we're going to get those jobless claims numbers now jobless claims you know those have been problematic for us if they continue to come in light um, that could get the market pulling back here today um, but on the other side and i think one day we're going to see jobless claims start to move higher and i think it'll be all at once there'll be just be a boom we're going to start moving higher that's going to shake the market and the reason that is is because we are slowing the economy the economy is slowing down and well when economies slow down we don't buy as many products companies don't need as many people and there you have it so um, slowing the economy is a double-edged sword um, let's watch this carefully after that we've got the philly fed we've got mester speaking import export prices industrial production today williams will be speaking we've got housing market index in here and we've got the natural gas report along with waller bar again and then later on through the day we've got Kansas City Fed manufacturing, we've got some bond auctions, Mester again, Cook, and then right at the end of the day, we've got international trade, um, excuse me, international capital and the Fed balance sheet to be paying attention to. Busy day on the economic calendar. Um, looking forward into Friday, we ease up just a little bit on economic reports with just housing starts and permits. But then we have a whole host of Fed speakers again, yakking it up out there um, on the economy. Let's take a look at our um, earnings calendar here for today. And our earnings calendar, well, <clears throat> we still have quite a few notables here this morning to be paying attention to. Um, I'll run through uh, several of these really closely. Uh, Chinese shopping, uh, Baba, will be reporting today. It looks like uh, they may have got a little bit of a disappointment here this morning. Their economy is really struggling here and um, starting to show up in some of their retail as well. Um, if you take a look, we've got AMAT that will be reporting today. Now this thing is just a rocket ship ride to the upside here breaking some resistance. Let's see if it can hold up here. If that earnings comes out good, maybe we attack all time highs here in um, applied material. Uh, we're gonna hear from uh, BZH today. Keep an eye on that, Beezer Homes. That's been racing up here recently, pushing into some resistance in the chart, heading into its earnings report. We've got Barry that will be on that list today. Barry Plastics pushing up into their downtrend. Um, really stretched out here in the short term, waiting for that earnings report as well. We're going to hear from uh, the Gap stores. The Gap stores, they have been unbelievably strong this, um, this um, year. Just zooming back up, you can see we've got a big resistance up here coming, heading into that earnings report today, so keep an eye on that. We're also going to hear from Macy's. Looks like Macy's getting a good result here today, trying to stretch on higher break some resistance after reporting this morning, Macy's coming back around. We're also gonna hear from R Ross stores. Ross has been very, very bullish. Discount retailers have been doing quite well, so keep an eye on that. We've got Post in there today. Today, Post um, has been racing up here um, recently, but I think probably the one of the most notables here for the day is gonna be Walmart. Walmart has been pushing um, all-time highs heading into its earnings report. Keep a close eye on that as it reports uh, this morning, so watch that close. Let's take a look, and by the way, 
you want the full list of notables, make sure you click the link below the title of the video. That'll take you back to the morning blog. Let's take a quick um, look at some stocks that could be setting up. Remember, guys, before we do that, if you guys could do me that favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you can please click the subscribe button on YouTube. Also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, if you could do me that favor, and also click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment. That helps the channel to continue to grow. Thank you so much to everyone who does take the time to do that. I truly appreciate it. Let's take a peek at some stocks that set, could be setting up and remember that they are not a recommendation to buy or sell any security. You've got to do your own due diligence and make sure it fits your rules and your guidelines. Never, ever just blindly follow anyone else's trade ideas. That's a bad business practice. Let's take a look at um, some of these stocks. Um, we've got a TLT. As you guys know, I've been talking about TLT here just a little bit. With bonds pulling back a little bit this morning, softening up, there's that resting pullback in here after that gap. I want to be watching this. I think it may be time to start picking up some more um, TLT in here for that opportunity. If we're going to be bullish in the market, we're likely going to see bonds um, uh, and bond funds starting to get uh, bought up and TLT being the 20 year treasury may have that opportunity to, to the upside. If you guys remember, uh, uh, BND was one that I talked about um, yesterday as well. Uh, that upside trend coming into play. Looks like we're getting a little bit of a pop and drop here on uh, BND this morning, but watch that close. Um, J and K might be another thing if you prefer kind of more of the junk bond um, area. Obviously the bulls have been pushing pretty hard um, in some of these areas. So TLT right now would be one of my favored. Let's take a look um, at some of the other stocks out here that could be setting up. Um, take a look at CCL. CCL has been stretching the last couple of days. You guys know that I've been talking about this, that possibility of uh, this moving higher. Now, this needs a rest, some kind of consolidation or a pullback in here. We're stretching up into a price resistance area of the chart. So let that rest or consolidate, form that trend, whether it's a pullback or a consolidation or even a breakout and come back to there. Watch this area over here for that next opportunity for a stock like CCL. Take a look at Lowe's. Now Lowe's, as you know, I'm going to be reporting here on the 21st, but it had a nice pop here as a result of Home Depot's earnings. We've pushed through some resistance here in the chart. We're still trying to stretch, but I do think Lowe's probably needs a little bit of rest or consolidation. So watch carefully in here for that pullback or rest and then wait for that next entry into Lowe's. Nice upside potential in that stock. And Home Depot, you gotta put in the same category. Stretching up here, breaking through resistance, little bit on the stretched out side of things at the moment. Any rest or pullback in the market sets up an opportunity there. Now I gotta tell you this pattern that I'm showing you here in the charts is everywhere in the market. It's all over the place. There are so many stocks coming up through those bottoming patterns and they're stretched out here um, in the short term. Um, and they're just everywhere. But you gotta be careful not to over trade these. Um, and Disney here being just a straight up move. Um, again, that parabolic move slamming into some price resistance, breaking through its downtrend. So now needs some kind of a substantial rest, pullback, something in here. Wouldn't surprise me at all if this pulls all the way back into here. Wouldn't surprise me if this consolidates here to find that um, up next inspiration for the upside, but it needs a substantial consolidation arrest just to absorb this move and to let some of these moving averages catch up. I mean, holy cow, just absolutely parabolic in this, um, I think in, in many places, a very over enthusiastic move to the upside. If you'll notice, there was one right here that did very much the same thing. And then, wow, um, a big pullback, and it, it incorporated a big pullback and a substantial consolidation. So don't rule out that possibility here when we stretch too far, too fast in a stock.
unfortunately guys i've run this video a little bit too long um i want to wish you all a fantastic day thank you so much for listening here be careful be safe today watch for that pullback to occur at any time we may continue to press this into the end of the week you never know but just be watchful for that potential pullback remember back could be substantial it's possible so make sure you're protecting your capital i want to wish you all all the very best and i'll see you right back here bright and early friday morning have an awesome day